uh, from the store and I have a big big crowd here today but so let me let me first say that thank you Chris for making this happen Chris from Fan Correct why don't you, pull, can you yeah. plug your, your uh, podcast I'm Omega with Fanatically Correct the Fanatic Correct podcast you can check out all our stuff uh, Linktree uh, slash Fan Correct and uh, of course uh, we're doing each other favors here I'm um, bringing uh, a couple fellas on here for uh, for Guillermo the here. fellas yeah we, the fellas yeah. Uh, and we're using this so you can find out where they're going to be this weekend and uh, Guillermo will take us into that and I'm just going to be here just kind of uh, sharing the content of being just a uh, sidekick. Yeah, I gotta get used to the sidekick thing. Yeah, right? oh, you always so write solo. You're, 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 right. you're a just solo like, player. Do this, yeah. maybe? There you go. Oh, <laughs> but then your head just looks a lot bigger. Yeah, I know, right? Like, that works. There you go. Are you comfortable like that? Like R2 and 3P. Yeah, it's like, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and, you're the, and you're the, oh, no, R2. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. But <laughs> welcome to the show, guys. I'm very, very happy to have you here. We're gonna go in, in full depth and talk about. Your careers are both in the Star Wars lore, so that that for us is like for our Star Wars fans, so so cool to have on screen personas, as, as we say. So, how is Florida treating you so far? I think phenomenal. I love Florida. Yeah, it's been a good time so far. Um, you know, we've only been here for a few hours uh, from yesterday, and uh, but had a great time last night, and you know, looking forward to the rest of the weekend. I, I need to get D out to the beach. He's, that's a thing he's hoping. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, I've never the seen Atlantic the water. Versus the Pacific, I guess, you know, he wants the cold waters. Not as cold as the Pacific. <laughs> not yeah. as cold as the Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. And not as, not as uh, wavy either. You don't get the, the surf that they have out there. But, yeah, I, I got to make sure he gets to the beach before he leaves. Okay. So yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I, but I, have you been in Florida before or no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Sometimes. Cool. Oh, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not a, not a big deal. <laughs> so, but before we, before we jump into the interview... I don't know about this, dude. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna make get, you look. Get the smaller. position you like. Yeah. Well, while while you're correcting that, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. Tonight, the fellas are gonna be with us at Flynn's Arcade and more. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know. I, okay. Is that like the coolest place on on, on earth or what? What Flynn's? Yeah. Yes. I so mean tonight. Tonight. Yes. If you're in town, if you're in town, if, or if you happen to be nearby, because they're in Margate. Yes. Right. Tonight, these two gentlemen are gonna be at the coolest places. Place ever on earth. Flint's Flint's arcade Flint's. What do you tell my audience what Flint's is? So Flint's is an arcade. It's a classic arcade. So in other words, um, you don't use tokens. You don't use uh, card gaming cards, anything like that. It's a play all night. Fifteen dollars till two a.m. on the weekends, till midnight on the weekdays. Uh, play all day. It's open play. You walk right up to the cabinets. Some of them are custom cabinets. Some of them are classic cabinets. We got consoles from Nintendo all the way to PS5. Uh, all the great stuff. We got air hockey table in there. We just expanded as well. A bunch of extra cabinets, and we have an event space. And in those event space, we do things like appearances, and uh, that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, it's a kickoff for Sunrise Comic Con tomorrow. We'll get into that in a second. But um, these are the four guests that will be joining us tonight at Flynn's Arcade and more, which of course is Dimitri Carlos with us and Asher Radpar. Very heavy in the Star Wars, like Guillermo said, the Star Wars lore. But they are also just for the FYI. Um, Artisher alone is also recently was in Barbie, Westworld, uh, Batman v Superman. Oh, There's we're gonna we're so gonna jump products. into that. So we're gonna jump into all, but it's whatever. They're not just Star Wars. So when you're coming out to these events, you have the opportunity to know that you know there's other things that they both. Like right, but so they'll. Well, What's going to happen? They're going to be there tonight. They're going yes, to be at from place. Six so nine. People can go and get autographs yep. and, and take pictures, pictures with them. All pictures taken. Stuff. Bring your toys. Yes, to get signed by them as to well. Get signed as well. And we we'll also be joined by you have it up on the screen, Elise Bowman and Ernie Reyes Jr. Uh, from the Dragon Ball and Dragon G, Dragon Ball GT and Food Baskets, a lot more. Uh, Elise Bowman she'll be with us, at, uh, anime voice actor, and of course Ernie Reyes from the Ninja Turtles franchise, Surf Ninjas, Last Dragon, uh, Red Sonia. Uh, he's he also has a nice, a wonderful body of work, and they will be with us tonight at Flynn's Arcade and more again, Margate, Florida, and that's to kick off the big one. Because we Saturday. have a busy weekend, and yes, why we is that? Because tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow we got the Sunrise Comic Con in Sunrise, Florida, and that's gonna be an all-day event. Guillermo's gonna be with us with Plastic Universe. They'll be of one of our wonderful of many vendors that we have on there. Betcha. Wonderful merch and really cool collectibles and things like that. We have escape rooms we have panels the fellows will be joining us for a q a panel uh up there as well as the other celebrities uh there's a ton of other panels trivia panels there's cosplay wonderful cosplay for the past six years uh and plus we've been doing a wonderful cosplay competition out there uh the 501st uh at your brother and over here on the florida side they'll be out there as well dagobah temple uh the safer guild they'll be doing padawan training i mean there's just so many things 
going on to remember this will take up the whole episode uh, we're not going to do that but that's uh you can get your tickets in advance also selling tickets at the door uh day of and that's again from 11 a.m till 6 p.m where and that is at the sunrise civic center and uh, if you go to the link at the sunrise.gov and go get your tickets, all the information is right there at the Sunrise Civic Center. Uh, the address, everywhere, parking, all that good stuff. Uh, food vendors, food trucks, and just so much going on. Uh, the skate room this year, uh, the, the sand pod there is for photo ops. We have a 360 photo op booth. Like, there's just so much going on. It's a full con, one day event, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, Sunday's a whole other thing we got going on. But in the Sunrise, in the Broward County, Fort Lauderdale area is the Sunrise Comic Con tomorrow, again, March 2nd, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. There you go. So, okay, nice, nice introduction. See, this this is working out. I like it. <laughs> so let's a, talk a to a most guy. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk to our guest now. So, you both has been uh, been in Star Wars in some degree. Like, I know that uh, each one of you has been, uh, have been in the same series, but at the same time, each one of you have been in different series. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. Correct. So why don't we start talking about that and let's just go in the order on the screen. So you've been in the Book of Boba Fett, also Obi-Wan, but at the same time, you have multiple characters, uh, as you're going to tell me now, which is beyond awesome. But at the same time, uh, you've done... I was checking you. I'm the IMDb, and I was just mind blown at the amount of stuff like Batman versus Superman, and even Barbie. Yeah. Uh, yep. Tell me a little bit about that. So, how do you start this? Uh, you know, I stunts and acting for for me has been a dream come true. Uh, I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I was out in Florida for polo. I played polo professionals. I chose to go from a dangerous sport to stunts as a transition. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> Usually guys go from MMA to something a little bit lighter like stunts. I went the other way around to something yeah, crazy. I saw your pictures on horses. Yeah, and like yeah. a Persian because you're from Iranian descent, yeah, right? Correct. So from embracing your Persian Correct. genes, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I rode the horse during the USC football games. I played polo professionally and then a lot of armor reenactments and stuff. Naturally, all those weapon skills and stuff that is kind of really useless in regular modern day society became a nice tool to have when you get into the film business because now you know how to use weapons. You know how to ride horses. You know how to put those two together, um, modern weapons. And, you know, then you get into a situation where they're like, hey, you know how to use an AR-15? Do you know how to you know, actually ride with it, holster it when, you know, or, uh, sh sorry, uh, shoulder it when you're riding and then have your weapons holstered if it's pistols or whatever on horseback. It's different. It's a completely different thing. You don't really do it. And I said, yeah, I actually, ironically, just kind of figured it out myself. And then, of course, we get called for Batman versus Superman to be part of that CIA uh, group that went in to rescue Lois Lane and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to be out on horses and, you know, fighting these, you know, mercenaries and Touregs and whatever it is going to be. So Batman versus Superman was one aspect of it, of course. A Western sci-fi aspect of it was Westworld. And then I've done a bunch of other Westerns as well. And But specifically in Batman versus Superman, what was, what was the rule? So we, in the opening shot, if you watch the director's cut of it, there is a... Um, the cut that is supposed to be watched. Let's it it is. <laughs> Let's just say it, the director's cut of that is is the cut to watch. Uh, they're in the beginning when Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane are in. Um, they're looking at where the Toregs are, and they're they're talking about you know whether he's a terrorist or an insurgent or whatever. They take her hostage because they see that you know there's a um, in Jimmy Olsen's camera there's a bug and they're tracking them. So now she's compromised and then we get the call to go in there and rescue them. So we're flying on horses to get in there and then there's a drone to blow the area up and we're like, we can't do it. We have an asset in there, they don't care. So as we're riding, we see the drone come in, shoot the uh, the, the missile and then Superman, of course, sure. intercepts it, goes in there, rescues them and then we ride in to see the aftermath. So that quick little minute, we were there a month training. Um, a month for one a month shot. for Man, training. We should have that budget. Yeah. So one, one that month budget training. Well, there's a lot that was going on there. There was, there was um, guys on motorcycles. There was people with helicopters, us with horses. We were training with horses in the morning. And then we'd go with probably one of the best human beings I've ever met. Um, he's a uh, SEAL Team 6 uh, uh, Tier 1 guy. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, we trained for a month with him. And we, we were training so hard and so fast and we were learning stuff. He was just like, hey, uh, we're kind of done with this. Do you guys want to learn how to 
you know, do a T intersection in a street, going in buildings, multiple rooms in buildings, opening, taking a hospital, taking a bus, taking an airplane. Do you guys want to know how to go into a sub? You know, that type of stuff so that we were natural. This is one of the things that I really loved about that production. Zach was train him and then let's just let him do it. We want to see how it would actually happen. So the first take that we went in there, Zach was walking in with us and he was watching it. And then they critiqued it afterwards. Like, how is it? And and the uh, uh, our trainer, the SEAL guy, um, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, he was like, this is this is how we would do it. This is how it is. They, they reacted because there were things in there we did not know. There were dead bodies, burned bodies. There were there was a tank in there. Uh, there was cars that were burned. So we were coming in there and pieing the corners properly, safetying everything properly. And so we moved in there the way that he's so like, it was a more natural reaction. It was a, it was a na- so he wanted natural. a natural reaction. So it was a phenomenal experience working with, with Zach and. Henry. And by Sag, you mean Zack Snyder. Yes. Zack Snyder. You know, Henry. The you know, Snyder. The Zack Snyder, Snyder, yeah. And he was really okay, funny, too. There, there was a lot of really funny things that were going on on set that he just he just has such a great personal humor about him. And, and by the way, the, the tour eggs in that were all actual refugees. Oh, wow. So when we got there, I'm like, wow, these guys look amazing. They're going, oh, that's them. <laughs> that's the real guys. And they would, their maneuvers, that like even at lunchtime, they would go squat in the desert area, not even in the lunch tent. They were just more comfortable sitting out in the natural terrain. They were at peace. They're just, you know, I'm like, wow, man, these guys look good. I I, I couldn't understand why they weren't saying hi back to us. They didn't speak a word of English. So we went in there afterwards. What what the special part about this was afterwards when he when he stopped, they they all thanked Zach. They all brought him a neat tribal gift and they thanked him. All of those uh, background guys. And he teared up and he went through Zack Snyder, shook hands with every single guy and said, my movie is my movie because of people like you guys. It's That's just cool. from from bottom to top. He's just yeah, a class. I have act friends guy. that work the, the, in some degree in some of his films, and yeah. they all told me that the, he's a, the ultimate gentleman when addressing Phenomenal. the crew and everything. Everyone is treated with the. Well, I, I will say this: the whole the, the team that was there, stunt team, the coordinators, um, second unit director, stunt coordinator, the whole everybody. It was just pro- one of the most incredible experiences he, he I had. He to try to always use as many as much as possible yeah. the same team and the same crew. Correct. The same guy. He does. He stays very loyal. Which not just makes for a better product because you know each other. Exactly. You know, obviously, we work with the same team. It's like being on a professional football team or, exactly. or any sports team. As a team, the better you'll jive. Correct. But also because I think he has that respect. And everybody's excited to see everybody. Yeah. And, you know, and that's something that I, I will say I think I've been fortunate enough, whether it's uh, say something that you're on, on a longer run with, say Star Wars or Avatar or um, uh, Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. a SEAL team, any of these things. When, when you walk in, you know, you're happy. You see your friends, like, hey, oh, hey, how am I killing you today? Are you killing me today? What are we doing? And for me, at least, I know for, you know, I can't say this for everybody. You know, some people, it's a job. They're done. They want to go home. I would say 99% of the time when I'm on set, I can't say 100, but 99% of the time on set, when they say it's a wrap, we can go home. I'm actually pretty bummed. I don't like the and end to of the show day. Show for work to work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the, the fun of it. That's what yeah. you enjoy. Which that's the secret. Obviously, find something you enjoy to do exactly. and get paid to do it. Oh, we had like a on Westworld. I want to say a. Sometimes we'd have a four thirty in the morning call time, and then we run fourteen hours, and they're like, "Hey, man, you guys are wrapped." And I'm like, oh, "I was really bummed." It's just because you're there. You're looking at you're enjoying, you know, Anthony Hopkins, and you're looking at, you know. 300 background and Ed Harris and you know I had some scenes with Ed Harris and he introduced himself to me <laughs> it's the other way yeah, like I know who you are right? he's like I'm Ed Harris well, I'm what like, about Barbie what did you do for Barbie so Barbie was a fun call because I had no idea what we were doing and uh just called me up and like hey why don't you check your availability I'm like oh yeah cool I'm available and they're like, I'm like what am I going to do you know I was just kind of curious and like oh, let's ride a horse and be in uh Century City you know California I'm like oh okay Century City. Easy work. And then I'm like, hey, what's it for? And they're like, Barbie. And I'm like, wow. Now, I mean, I knew Barbie was going to be big, but not what it is. Not what it is. You know, with Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, I mean, there's two phenomenally talented people. By the way, better looking in person than they are even on camera. Is that even possible? It's, yeah, exactly. (laughs) And uh, so (laughs) you showed up there, and I was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. And then uh, coincidentally, I mean, we all kind of know each other. So I knew some of the stunt crews that were there. And and the Wranglers, and uh, so I knew them, and the horses I knew. And so I was like, hey, and they're like, yeah, that's the Man in Black's horse from uh, Westworld. And I love that horse. Oh, I've ridden that fun. horse before, so right. it was a really good horse. And so you know the horse. So I knew that horse. Uh, you know, so I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to get on him. And 
So all we did is this quick little walking scene and, you know, and it's, it's what, three seconds in the film. And Ryan, Gos we spent the rest of the day doing some Liberty stuff with the horse and Ryan Gosling walks in, but do you guys have any idea what you're doing? Um, <laughs> no, no clue. And he goes, well, well, I see you guys and you guys inspire the rest of what I do in the film. So, which of course, when we watch the film, then I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> we're the guys who in inspire the rise of the, the patriarchy. patriarchy. Yeah. So that was pretty fun. Um, and the fun thing about Barbie was, again, I was a little bit bummed. We were there. I was er there a little bit earlier. I want to say not not crazy early. Uh, I'd like say about, I think my call time was like seven. And, you know, by the time you go through hair and makeup and wardrobe, it's like eight, nine o'clock. We were done by noon. So I actually was wrapped, had lunch, and then went home. It was a quick gig. It was an easy day, great day. Coordinator Ingrid, who brought me in, was just amazing. She just one of the nicest people is she calls me I'll, I'll work for her anytime you know george you know coddle who i ended up working for on skeleton crew you know i was like oh this is awesome i'm like wow this is this is really cool so you kind of seen the same people but i'm like wow, i just did something for barbie and then of course barbie comes out and blows up and i'm like are you kidding me I, it, I, I, how lucky can you be to go from avatar to yeah, barbie definitely yeah, you're like, same, oh, within just a year span and it, it's a three minute scene and it's a, an extremely pivotal a three minutes pivotal i wish it's three it, seconds yeah yeah it's that, yeah but, but exactly. an extremely pivotal role like it actually changes uh ken's uh, yeah. perspective and causes him to basically go villain for yeah. that rest of the film <laughs> yeah. to the end so, so but before wow. we jump into star wars let's talk about dimitri also because You've been in the Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, the NQ. Thank you. That's my favorite <laughs> of all the new series and Ahsoka, which, you know, it's very, it's yeah. very, very, very good. That's right. Um, but you done like I, I didn't put the pictures of you on fire, but I was very impressed of seeing <laughs> you like all lit on fire because now we're oh, just going to jump into the entire Star Wars stuff. And of course, you have to be the stump trooper that uses the stump facer, which is a beautiful nod to a new hope for like for us when i saw that for the first time i go like they know what they're doing that's right because right. you know the, there's always that situation and regrettably in star wars when there are people that are just trying out the lore and then just take liberties and it gets out of canon and then people like me start like right but that <laughs> those those three examples were really really well done why don't you tell me a little bit more about about that experience um the experience working on all the shows um It's been fantastic. Um, I, I love, I mean, kind of Adisher touched on this, you know, you enjoy going to work um, and the days are not the easiest and obviously very long days. And a lot of the costumes are pretty funky and they're difficult to wear at times and you can't see anything. And, um, and yeah, we keep I, coming I back. I was going to ask, because yeah. that's an issue since 1976. Of course. Is that stormtroopers still have visibility issues? Like, Of course. Uh, yeah, you can't see anything. Um, I mean, you're lucky if you get a helmet that doesn't have uh, lenses that are that have been scratched up by years of people being in them and scuffing them up. And uh, yeah, so if you can see anything through them, you're you're pretty lucky. But um, you know, you do what you can. And you're still moving around. You still get to do all the all the fun stuff that we get to do. So um, it keeps bringing all, all of us back. And we like all those shows have people who want to be there and create an amazing product um and it's it makes the day so much more enjoyable to to work with people who actually want to be there instead of just have to come to work and makes the days go by faster and you know if you're there for 12 14 16 hour two, days two things for d so on the visibility issue we yeah. were talking earlier before the cast which is pretty amazing you can't see anything have yeah. you have you well for ahsoka well uh, his and that it's actually uh, share that story for the podcast because <laughs> sure. he was just saying something with me he had zero visibility in the scene you that can't his, see you can't see yeah well he wasn't a stormtrooper he was one of the one of the, the makeup characters uh -huh. uh, so he had like a mask on to right. get to tell uh, the, oh, that mean, part of the opening as far as visibility goes uh the stormtroopers are actually with as little as you can see in a stormtrooper bucket you can that's actually one of the higher levels of visibility of the stuff that i wear um on on ahsoka what, what chris is talking about was a character um that's a, a a new creature in um live action which is a godal and um in a scene that was um you know standing standing there while a senator is being introduced and um everybody else is standing there and they're either not they're, they're just human so they're walking up in the 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 stage is this uh, tall podium and it's up like, I don't know, maybe like 10 feet off uh, up in the air. And 
I, I don't and mean to I have zero. I love the fact that you said they're just humans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normies, yeah. Um, Normies. <laughs> so everybody, everybody else up there can see just fine, and and you know, but the, so the, the whole the whole stage is raised up in the air, and uh, like the the crowd that's that's standing down is looking up at us, and there's actually like they built railings around it just in case somebody, you know, just in case somebody might fall, they don't, and and then even beyond the railings, there are. Uh, like stunt pads and, and porta pits all around again, just in case somebody Someone does calls. manage beyond the railings, and um, then so then there's you. then there's my go yeah pretty much then there's my godel who has absolutely no visibility like I can't see anything literally zero so I'm being walked in by three people like one on each arm and then somebody like uh, guiding guiding me from the front to not go over and actually on one of the on one of the scenes that we were or one of the angles that we were shooting for that scene they had to take the railing that was in the front off. So I was literally just standing right at the edge of the... tether you or something? Like a green tether? Or... Uh, no, that, but I mean, that's, I'm that's standing what, still. That's what the, the things at the bottom I, I'm, I'm, Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm standing completely still, so there's no there's no actual like uh, chance of me falling over unless something really weird happens. But but yeah, as far as visibility did, goes, there's just nothing at all going on. you have something to shout in your mind in case you did feel yourself go over? Like, <laughs> like call my lawyer! <laughs> call my lawyer, right. Like, it, it's that people don't know. Like... Because yeah. not everybody has a stone trooper helmet and yeah. people don't know. And then when I see like like high end stunts with, that involves stone troopers, I go like hats off to those guys because you right. can't see and you're pulling that. Like, yeah, that that takes another layer of, of you know, achievement because one thing is blindfolded and one thing is like what as a normie, as you say, <laughs> and that um, it makes it more complex, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely makes it a lot more complicated to know where you're going or to, to know where you have to end up. You know, uh, stunt work is all about hitting your mark and and uh, and safety, obviously. And when you can't see anything, safety becomes a much bigger issue. And so does hitting your mark. Um, but uh, the guys who are speaking of safety, yeah. hitting your mark. Yeah, actually, let me show you. Oh, there you go. I want to show you. visibility. Yeah. No, you wear it. Oh, me? Oh, <laughs> you know what? I've never put on a storm trooper helmet. I don't know if that applies to the ones that you wear. I've never put a storm trooper helmet on before. You have to do it like this and then rotate? It definitely makes it easier. Yeah, because that's yeah. the way we're used to doing uh -huh. it. Like, you have to like put it like this and then rotate. <laughs> so you put it this way and rotate. Okay. Correct. Uh, oh, oh. How do you guys see anything in this? Wow. That is wow. And this is fun. Yeah. See, I can I can see your eyes. See, I, was, I, can see I your was just going to say more visibility than you had. <laughs> but I was just going to say, like those lenses are perfectly clear. You can I can see yeah. behind from Ours from aren't. the outside in right. is clear. Yours are darker, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not even they're they're so badly scuffed that you can't see. All you're seeing is through the scratches. Yeah, so it's like money. it's they're all not, it's all like new ones for every movie. it's like they're it's frosted. Movies, so it, it you know it's you can't see it from the from the outside in because you're not looking at you don't want to see eyeballs obviously but then for us it's just that much more difficult to see from the inside out you think you can do the rest of the show like that no way <laughs> no way and so so the other the good. other thing that a lot of people don't know, know is as you're breathing you fog it up right yeah oh, that's yeah. what already was happening so mm -hmm. I, so i'll tell you guys a little fun story so when i was on set and this will this will nod to another part of something that is you you had brought up when I was on set, they're like, how the hell is Adisher looking? How does he see everything? They couldn't figure it out because my visibility in my helmet was great. And they, they're like, well, we got to figure out how the hell he's doing it. I pulled it out. And if you do it, you can't do it in this one that you just put on. But there's a top pad. I'd rip the top pad out so the helmet can come and sit down. So I'm allowed to do that. There's the background stormtroopers, and then there's the stunt stormtroopers, and then there's some suits that they keep, you know, super clean for stunts and background. Like for collectors, that's a sin. You, you, you just committed a sin. Right? <laughs> well, well, no. So, so here, here's how it happens. So, I coincidentally, and we can talk about this later. I coincidentally happen to be a member of the 501st. So, when you're building your own helmet and you're building it New Hope style, you figure out how to wear it because. I need to be able to see kids. I need to be able to see all kinds of, you know, people, interaction, stairs yeah, and stuff the like that. Yeah, the last thing that you want is to be stepping exactly. kids. So a lot of times people will look and they're like, how are you running in your stormtrooper outfit? How are you seeing everything? How can you do this? I said, well, there's no top padding in mine. And they put that top padding in there. So what we would do in order to secure that helmet is rip the top padding off and then we put it underneath our chin. Mm -hmm. So now it's pulling the helmet down and I, on, I only needed the padding for the sides. But then when I would have the heavy ratchet scenes or something like that, when they're yanking us on cables, then I would wear a soft football helmet pad, like for flag football. I would wear it underneath it. And then I was getting cabled 
like 30 feet and then you hit the ground and at least it's protected. But I didn't need to see anything there. All I needed to do is tilt my helmet down, look, yeah. charge, get yanked and pulled. And the same thing within the water sequence in Obi-Wan Kenobi. We needed to see where we were going. But once once we got hit, it was yeah. 24 water cannons at 80 miles an hour. So when it wrecked us, I mean, those helmets were bouncing off of our heads. So we started patting the chins and all around it. But it's really funny because then the rest of the stunt crew started ripping out the top <laughs> pot and everybody could now see that. Like, oh, yeah, this is better. But the, a funny story about this is um, there's a sequence where Vader walks in into the town when you first see him. And he's looking for Obi-Wan. Yes. He, he can't see. So he can't hit his mark. So he, Vader can't see down here. So we were all standing on the side and took his helmet off and he paced it. One, two, three, yep. four, five. He would stand and then turn. He's like, okay, cool. One, two, three, four, five. And then he'd come back and put his helmet on and he walked through it. One, two, three, four, five. One time when he came through and he said, one, two, three, four, five, all of us stormtroopers were like, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Because funny, wow. guys. Yeah, so, see what I was saying? Like, so it does. Yeah. Hold it is, yeah so so what left. happens is you can manipulate the stormtroopers if you kind of know it. And it was a little bit of my... 501st, 501st background yeah, say, you know yeah. same thing as picking up the helmets everybody was really opening their legs kind of doing uh, like splits to get down to pick up their helmets like well how do you do it and i just spun my thighs bent down pick it up and like oh <laughs> i'm like well guys because they don't want to touch the outfit well no they, they just didn't know that yeah, that would have just... it's just the way the thighs are built yeah. so for that we can do that but you're, you're compromising the top when you're but then he's talking about like other stuff like when there's masks you know when i did my fitting I had a mask like he did and the visibility was fine because the eyes were cut just for the fitting. I couldn't breathe. Not at all. There's Ouch. two That's little holes worse. here and I'm like, dude, what am I supposed to do running around? I can't breathe in this. Pass out. I got lucky because that particular character was all prosthetics. So it's three hours. I'm like, Hey, so all the guys that were stunts and background stuff, they're like, ah, how's your, how's your mask moving? Like, I'm like, sorry guys, it's not a mask. It's prosthetic. Wow. That's my face. Yeah. But that's, 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 but that's how thing. good the, the, the masks are. The designers, yeah. they're, they're not yeah. stunned. So they just go all free with creativity, but wait well, until you have to wear this and go into an action right. sequence it's for like, the to, right, 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 right. So is there any, or I'm pretty sure there's multiple. Is there any scenes that we can pinpoint and say, that's that's my guy right there. Multiple. Yeah, yeah, multiple, multiple, multiple. Oh, for multiple. sure. Can you tell us? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'll, look, you go first. Oh, you you have the most pivotal stormtrooper <laughs> in all of Mandalorian. Right. Um, Send him all the hate mail to that, yeah, that's uh, right. To his, that's uh, right. His IG. Let's go right here. Um, so uh, yeah, one of my one of my uh, I would say my favorite moments uh, working on all of these projects uh, has been uh, the stormtrooper that gets to stun, as you mentioned, Grogu in uh, in season two of Mandalorian. Um, and that was uh, that was just a big favorite moment of mine. I was I was so excited to see that actually come on screen. And, and uh, um, you know, stormtroopers are known not to hit things, so uh, it was that a, too. Yeah, it was a proud moment. It was a proud moment. It was a proud moment. Granted, it was a stun, but yeah. still, you know, I, I was a win is a win. You, did, did someone brief you on or, or your group about the um, the importance of that action within the lore? Because that was a nod. Right, to, as you mentioned, to you know, to Leia yeah. and a new hope when she gets done, it's even the same framing, same angle, and everything. So yeah, it was a, a clear nod. Did someone mention that, or, or? Um, I, I overheard it being talked about, but it wasn't really like it wasn't discussed with with us who were actually doing it, or not in not that directly at least. Um, and that could, those kind of decisions are you know being made by like John and Dave for the most part, and and. Uh, they're coming up with that stuff a lot of the time. Uh, did, did you even know at the time that's who you were shooting, or because obviously they pull back a lot of information, yeah, you know, so it doesn't slip out. So like that, did you even know? Yeah. The day I mean, you were of, just guess, like, yeah, you're gonna aim down. And... Yeah, the, yeah, the, the day of, there was no geek saying you have to do it like this because you right. know back in 1977 there was nothing like that. Or? No, no, um, not like not that specifically. No, um, like I said, I, I would have done that. <laughs> I would have gone and said, you better do it like this. You know, I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are with you. I'm sure a lot of people are with you. Um, there might have been the thought of it that like behind that. And like I said, I overheard them talking about it. And the, there's a lot of that communication that happens uh, just completely aside from us. Uh, it doesn't like those details don't don't come to us because I mean, you kind of need to know basis, you know. Um, and as long as what they end up seeing on the on the monitor is close to what 
they're looking for, then it's good to go. And then, then if it's like way off, then then they might come in and make some sort of adjustment that like, well, we need it to look a little bit more like this so that we can reference what we're trying to reference. Um, so hopefully but, the whole gig me so it's behind the scenes. Like, you need to do it in a certain way. Like I would have totally done that. It was See, the same uh, level of secrecy with Luke, right? With the, the famous Luke. Every, everything. Like everyone, no one knew that it no. was Luke. They all thought it was someone else. Yeah, like, everything is everything is fully hidden. Everything is completely, sometimes liter under literal wraps. Uh, I mean, in a lot of cases, we're walking around fully covered and uh, everything on the different stages uh, is like covered up and, and um, like wrapped in, 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 you know, draped in black fabric so that you can't see it. Only people who are supposed to be there can actually go inside these little spots and see what is being worked on um so everything is hidden and you don't know what's going on until the day you get there really um you know obviously in a case like Adisher where he had to do go through like the makeup process and get uh, fitted for the, the prosthetics and everything you know that that's going to be the character that you're going to be uh whenever that is but um you know obviously the dialogue but that starts like rolling out to you as as you get closer up to it but a lot of stuff is just kind of flows out on the day when, when did you guys get to see that Luke moment for the first time was it with the on rest air. of us or the, the rest of us yeah. really mm -hmm. yeah. wow so you just had the exact same yeah. things and you're like and, but the yeah, extra they're, if I'm they're seeing the story of uh, Kate yeah. what's her last name she does a bo yeah that she was told like, that it was Ki Ari Mundi on mm. the script that she she always thought it was Ki Ari Mundi so when she saw the episode she sent a, a text to Filoni saying really yeah. Luke <laughs> you didn't tell me. You you lied to me. Yeah, yeah. Every, right. Everything is coded, by the mm -hmm. way. So, That's like, you too. don't like when you uh, when you show up, you're not called stormtroopers. You're called, yeah. you know, snowshoers, or like the Clatoonian that I played. One of them was called a king. The other one was called the Don. They don't. You don't see who they are. Like the uh, Trandoshans were. They had some other name to them. So you yeah. you see their their titles and their King is the butcher shop scene, right? <laughs> no, King was the um so phenomenal thing that happened there. King was the the one in Jabba the Hutt's Palace that I played. Oh, okay. Which was crazy because I you know, I walked into Jabba the Hutt's Palace. I still don't know what is happening. I just know we're in there and they're like, Oh yeah, we're gonna show you we show Mr. Radpour the where he sits. So I'm I'm like, that's Boba's helmet. I'm like, it's at the, you know, so I knew Bobo was going to be there, but I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm like, holy crap. And they're walking me through a table. I'm like, I think I'm going to sit here. Maybe I'll sit next to Bobo. They take me to the head of the table and says, King. And I'm like, that's right. <laughs> right now here. We're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, of course, through the makeup, I knew it was Clatoonian, but they're all code names. So whoever you're addressing, say, for example, in the, in the meat locker scene, when I was Kaba, I had no idea that was Mando. It's just a guess. Yeah. You're like, I think, I think, I think. And then I go to the training session. And of course I see, you know, uh, Ming Q and I'm like, Ooh, and I'm like, wait, who else is going to be there? And a couple <laughs> of the other guys that come in, then all of a sudden I see Latif walk in. I'm like, yes. So, so you didn't know at all. No. So how do you get, so how do you get booked for the, for the gig? So what they do is they, they, so in, in that particular case, they wanted a stunt performer that can do some acting, has some lines and stuff like that. So, um, you get, uh, they call you up to check your availability. Then they send you a NDA, which is phenomenal. You sign the NDA. Then they release a section which you access and you see the script and it's only your piece. Everything else is redacted from it. So you see the script and you read through the script and even parts of my script are redacted. And some of it, as you read for it, they change it. You're not reading the full thing. So you don't understand what's going on. So I'm reading, you know, the pieces and I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, of course, on the day, as you get closer, they'll give you the real script. You read that and you're like, okay, now I get an idea. Like in Obi-Wan, I was like, I'm 99% sure this is going to be Obi-Wan. Like the day off. On the no, 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 no. Because you have to rehearse your lines. But you don't, I didn't know the character that was going to be standing in front of me. And of course you show up and you see Ewan and you're like, dude, seriously? I'm like, I'm going to be interrogating you. But on that particular thing, you get the idea that they're your, you know, your crime boss, but you don't know who's in the room. You know, I, there's no way for me to know Gamorreans are going to be in there. Boba is going to be there. Fennec Shan's going to be there. That kind of stuff. In the meat locker scene, you go through it and you get the idea. And I see a previs, and I'm like, hmm. They're using placeholders, and you're like, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be Mando. But you don't know it until you go to rehearsals. And then when you go to rehearsals, of course, performer and performer are doing their stuff. So you have to break it up into two different pieces. You're like, hey, I got to go through the actual action beats. 
you know, he, he this is where you're going to get stabbed, you lift it up in the air, hit into the table. This is when you shoot. This is what this guy's giving you. So we go through all of that. And on the other side of it, you know, I had my teeth were made for me. So there's two sets of teeth. There was the set teeth and then my teeth uh, for practice. So I had those teeth for two months just to practice my lines wow. because it's very hard to talk. You put those prosthetics in there and they're fan- and you talk like this. Right, but that's even better because it makes you sound right. like alien, I guess. Exactly. So when when you when you want to talk right now the way we're talking, our lips and our teeth the way they come together, it allows you to make the voices. So in order to speak as as that platoon, you have to really enunciate, or else it doesn't show. Well, that's, Hence, that's super cool. you look yeah. lost. And I, I, you I know? will say, action wise, he also does the stunts in that scene as well. Right. That personally, because I'm like D, we're Rogue One's our favorite. Uh, our favorite Star Wars film. I like a lot of the Star Wars. What happened here? We'll get to it, but because he's a Rogue One fan too of, of the best uh, okay. Star Wars movies. Yeah. But I personally, I like a lot of Star Wars films. I, I like a lot of Star Wars moments that could be not Star Wars as well. And that's such yeah. a John Wick, born identity moment. That whole right. one-on-one combat fights, and he's the main guy in that room. So you know what's happening. funny about that? And I'll tell you, so I had this discussion with um, Bryce Dallas Howard, and she laughed, and I love it. She's amazing. That is probably one of the most kindest human beings you can work with Excellent as a director. director. She's just incredible. Yeah. Just a good soul. So I said this to her, but I said it on Obi once. Okay, man, just call out your shots. Just go pew, pew. I go, I don't pew, pew. I ping, ping. I hit. <laughs> so if you notice that Kaba is actually hitting. So I hit Mando. Pop, pop, yeah, pop, pop, the, so I was calling him. I'm like, ping, 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 ping. And Mando's head is jerking. You know, he's getting hit. And then when we were on, on uh, Obi-Wan, you know, we were hitting. He's just deflecting. And armors protecting him and stuff like that. So I was like, ping, ping, ping. I go, hey guys, we ping, ping. We don't pew, pew. This is 501st. Because that that stormtrooper group targets. in Obi-Wan is actually 501st. And even Deborah Chow would say, hey, these aren't regular stormtroopers. These are 501st. Yeah, so they, they, they we ran went, out of people and they actually. Well, I, I meant even the first. actual, even the actual uh, legion in the story is yeah, actually 501st. The designated 501st. So then, you know, I, I had the uh, Deborah Chow ask me. Yeah. So by, that scene, by the way, at the checkpoint with uh, Ewan McGregor, all my 501st buddies were calling me to do something on May the 4th. And that was my first day on Obi-Wan was May the 4th. I'm doing the oh, most May the 4th thing you, you can do. So then May she the asked 4th. me, she that goes, hey, awesome. she said, yeah, you want, yeah, we want to bring in, I'd like to bring in 501st, but you know, I want to make sure that we do it right. And I said, no problem. She goes, can I get your help? And I said, absolutely. So I got uh, put together a list of guys for 501st and submitted that. And then there were some other suggestions that came in and we looked and so 45 501st members were, were brought in to supplement the, the, the other 20 stormtroopers that were on set. And then, uh, so then all those guys, you know, they, they knew the movements, they know how to hold their blasters. So then we went to attention as well. It's the same thing throughout the rest of it. There's specific ways to hold the blasters and move with, you know, with the stormtroopers. And it kind of, there's people have been mixing it up, but it's always left handed. You could fight right or left handed, but when Vader's there, present left handed, that type of thing. So sort of bringing that back in. And uh, that's a beautiful thing about the final first, like if, especially if you're filming something related to Star Wars and right. you're, you're out of troops, just just contact the local chapter. And yeah, they'll, they'll send troops. Away. But that, I will say, crazy. though, I will say, though, that's not something that's common. It, yeah. it, it's a it's an anomaly. I think people are getting too spoiled thinking that that'll happen more often. The thing is, as a 501st member, I will say this and I'm a 501st member. I love the 501st. 501st members have opinions. Or if I use D, he will do his job. Yeah. He's a stormtrooper. <laughs> there, there's an opinion of what a stormtrooper is. It's a, it's a fan. And, and so all those guys that came on set had to table that and say, hey, it doesn't matter what you feel about this. This is what the stormtrooper is going to do. He's doing that. I'm doing that. So say, let's say I'm doing an acting position. He's doing a stunt position. They're doing a background position, whatever it might be. You have to organize that and make it not so loosey yeah, goosey that that's a very good point that's on. a very good point because yeah. i will be i will be one of those guys that say well we're not supposed to behave that way because you know in comic number 42 right and, blah, blah, blah. and that it's it's too much information because right. you, you won't be able to and it was the same thing with the clones when they came to me like how are the clones going to hold their blasters how are they going to do this i say well clones are going to hold it different than the stormtroopers this is how they march and this is what they would do there was actually a really good scene when we were shooting and we were killing the jedi I double tap. I was double tapping them. So I was kill one, shoot this one again and shoot back across the other one. And all of a sudden they're like, who's double tapping? Doc gets out of shore. I go, I had it. Everybody double tap. <laughs> that's amazing. Cause, they know that's yeah. the way Cause we it. had to finish them off, you know, and we're like, going to say, Hey, that's, that's what's going on. I, I would love for us to hear one story from D specifically because 
last night over at uh, Jay Wakefield uh, Brewery, when we did that live uh, podcast with Jake James Gilbo and Jedi Lexi, we got to hear Arisher's perspective mostly of it. But what was it like? So we stepped away from Star Wars because they've done a lot of other projects, and specifically Western. From your perspective, the story of Arisher lighting you on fire. <laughs> Go into like what well, because we could touch on safety and things like that. Yeah. So that yeah. had to be, yeah, mean, yeah. you know, how I you trust this man a lot, but how much do you yeah. trust him? Like so, you on but fire? before, why don't you explain yeah. the, the sure. face bump thing that happened that I just missed? Like, between you <laughs> oh, oh, the Rogue One. Oh, because <laughs> last night we said what the, our favorite uh, Star Wars movies are, which some people it changes from day to day. I'm an avid Rogue One person, yeah. and so is the Hell new yeah. Hell yeah. He's yeah. The favorite Rogue One. But uh, then we'll get your. I see. I, I, I don't think his changes. I like his version of what his my, favorite. My, is. Rogue One to Return of the Jedi to me is one movie. That's my favorite. I think movie. he just won a fist bump. He yeah, just wants exactly. to fist bump. Yeah. Exactly. Such, I mean, like, we'll do it too. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in the end. So being lit on fire. Yeah, man. Take us through that. Um, it was hot, man. It was. Uh, it was a good it time. Um, no funny hottest thing stunt ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, it was a killer time. Um, it was. Um, uh, like you said, safety is so important in the stunt role to begin with, and fire is definitely no joke. Um, and I'm extremely grateful to Adisher. He actually was the one who was coordinating the project, and um, we got an awesome uh, fire safety team uh, that was there, and uh, the coordinator for it specifically. Um, uh, is that your first time being lit on fire? Or? Not my first time being lit oh, on okay. fire. First time being lit on fire quite in that way. Um, I don't you know, it was a it was a pretty specific setup that was being you know that that we wanted to achieve, and um, it was surprisingly similar to the stuff that I do on a lot of the you know on, for all the Star Wars stuff that I do. Um, it uh, not often that you're getting lit on fire wearing a mask that you can't breathe in or see out of, and this was a full face mask, which is very similar to the to the silicone masks that I wear on Star Wars. So already pretty used to not being able to breathe comfortably uh but obviously in the middle of in the middle of uh having your face lit on fire you can't breathe at all so you'd be breathing in you'd be breathing in the the, the fire uh the hot air um so i actually had tubes running out of my mouth down my back uh, that i could breathe out of directly and um, it just felt normal because I was so used to doing it on Star Wars, and the masks are completely... It felt normal. It did feel normal. It was... Well, so like I said, this is the first time that I had done a burn like that, and I didn't... I, I knew that I was comfortable going into it, but I didn't know how I was going to feel in the middle of it until I actually was in the middle of it. And when I was there, it just didn't feel like anything out of the ordinary, because I was so comfortable already wearing the mask. There was no, like... There's no instance of any sort of claustrophobia, which is always a concern for anybody wearing a mask that you know that enclosed um and there were there, no so bad, there's yeah. there's no holes in it at all there's no eye holes you know all the masks that we're talking that we're joking about having terrible vision yeah. or or you know um breathing not being able to not being able to breathe comfortably out of it they still have holes they still have mouth holes they still have like the the decoration for where a mouth goes where the eyes go and there are holes in them in every setup they might not you know, you might have holes looking out this way, like a Trandoshan, where you can't see out of them because your eyes are going this way, and the the, yeah, the right. Trandoshan is out to the side. In real yeah. life, you're not a Trandoshan. So Correct, but the, hole, but the holes are still there, so there is some kind of airflow. So in this uh, in in this side of this mask for the for the fire, um, there are no holes in it at all. Just the just the back where the where the zipper is to to be able to um, you know put it on and off. But um, yeah, it just it just felt totally normal. I, I mean, and of course, like we set it up to the point where. Uh, everything was completely safe. Obviously, the distance around it, and you have like an amazing experience of actually having it happen. And the entire that's cool. Like as quiet as set normally is in the middle of a take, there's always something going on. People are continue to work, even though every, you know the Not AD department is, is yelling at somebody like, "Hey, knock it off! We're in the middle of a shoot." Um, and silence, just and complete flames, silence. Baby. Everyone is like hyper focused on what's going on right in the middle and it happens to be me being on fire so you, you knew um, all along when you took on that project that that was a scene you were going to shoot one of the stunts you're going to do or is that something like i just go, i got the guy for you <laughs> like, um, we need to light someone on fire now i don't think we knew that it was going to happen right at the very beginning of it but pretty early on so i was very well aware that that was going to be happening and i was super okay. excited about it I, it awesome. was you know like i said it, it was not something that i had done before quite in that manner and it was uh it was definitely 
you know, it, it was still a challenge and just kind of pushing that boundary a little bit of, of what you what you're capable of. And, and um, like I said, you kind of don't know how you're going to feel until you're actually in it. Um, but I was fully confident in, in the team. Uh, obviously, Adisher as the guy in charge of the entire of the entire thing. So, um, yeah, I didn't have any concerns going into it and just like fully comfortable and calm on the way down and, and everything went off without a hitch. And it was dope. That's fun. Yeah. By the way, those watching the stream, if you have any questions, just put it on the comments with the, before we go and we'll bring it up and, and, and put it to them. So going back to, to, to especially Stone Troopers, how does it feel now that you see a Stone Trooper figure and you go like, It, is, is that how it goes? Like Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? A little bit. So, uh, you know, what's really weird is, um, so I collect some of the Black Series guys. So now, because it's the armor that we wear, like I've even have some of them that I've CA glued at home standing in my actual stances from scenes or behind the scenes, like with a clone helmet off and, I'm, and I've got the blaster. I just did one where... It's a uh, you know Commander Apo, and from Obi Wan, right? Which is technically me, or any any of the other clones. So I, I I'll collect them and I'll position them and I'm like, oh, that's literally me. That's the same armor. It's the same cut. It's not a New Hope or Empire Strikes Back or whatever. It's the you know the Rogue One suits basically. That's what we call them. New Era Rogue right, One. Suits. Does, so it's literally us. So how does it feel to be immortalized in plastic? Because basically now you know we're we're humans and we have a we have a yeah. expiration date, but now you you know that in perpetuity right. that character is right. right there will be a nod of your existence. Right. That, that takes it to another level, I yeah. think. What do you what do you guys think about that? I think it kind of has to do with being a part of this entire universe to begin with, and I mean any you know obviously there's so many people who are in the film industry doing extremely memorable work and they're just being on screen is already right being immortalized like that's your legacy to some degree uh, obviously people do everything else that they do but um uh, every franchise has those like extremely memorable moments and and characters that that will never be forgotten and continue to be uh, like brought up for the rest of time beyond beyond when we're going to be alive i'm sure um and all the collectibles industry is you know continues to grow and grow it used to be this niche thing that i've growing up i didn't have even access to it didn't really know it was a thing didn't understand it and i still gen genuinely don't quite understand it now um but but i very much appreciate it it's i think it's awesome i like i mentioned yesterday uh like i i love the enthusiasm uh, of fans and, and then like even more so like the the fanatical fans that are like so enthusiastic like the room full of just you know you walk into some collectible room and there's literally no space to move around because that's just that's all that, that's all it is you know, and, and now with all the, with all the 3d here. with all the 3d printing like that's like when you guys are yeah. doing appearances and i constantly like, how often are you seeing like that people like oh there's right. packaging like i make this yeah people are making their own stuff yeah. I, was, I, was yeah. gonna, i was gonna touch on that as well people are starting to make their own things and um just showing their own creativity i mean it's already kind of like uh you know um as far as either cosplay goes or uh like five of first members making their own armors and customizing them to to like specific the, like the the specs that are laid out by you know who, yeah. whatever the organization that that figures all that all those little details out um but just showing their their personal creativity creating figures and creating costumes and um and then they're making it for themselves to be able to uh, portray a character that we're portraying on screen, you know, to be on screen. So it's that like uh, that emulation, um, you know, we're pretending to be a character. They're pretending to be the same characters or like us being those characters. And I mean, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. So that this will be my last question because I know you guys are on a time crunch, but uh, you, when you were kids, You, you kind of kind of gave me the leeway to that. Um, did you were you fans of the movies? Were did you ever hope or think like I'm gonna when I grow up I'm gonna be in one of those films or then following films of course and toys because this we're all about toys here. That you have the toys as a kid. That you play with toys as a kid. How does that connect to everything? I know it's like four questions and one, but yeah, you know I'm just giving it context. No, no worries. Uh, I mean my my answer is pretty simple. I, I grew up 
uh, I'm originally from Ukraine. Um, I came here when I was uh, when I was only five years old. My family was was pretty poor. Um, I uh, didn't really have toys as a kid. Um, it was a kind of an old school upbringing. Um, I I, I kind of got into trouble even like thinking about requesting a toy. The only thing that like I kind of grew up on uh, on video games uh, because that was what I saved my money for because I knew that that would be my preference. So um, it, it wasn't really a it wasn't really a thought growing up here. And then by the time I got to you know old, like teenager years, I didn't really it wasn't an interest of mine because I was completely. It, it wasn't it wasn't something in my life yeah. before when I was a kid when it's like a common thing to have uh, so then it just didn't occur to me it d completely was it's not also not on the where the films line up with, with your age obviously there's you know uh, yeah, I mean yeah no. it's fantastic for his age because there's a significant <laughs> age difference between the two and they're great friends and it's amazing because they work together yeah but it's also that the timing of when films came out 100%. you know like, well, did you ever see a Star Wars movie in, in yeah film, yeah you know when you're younger yeah I saw the original trilogy and and I enjoyed watching them but, but I'm not in theaters but, now, no of course not in theaters I mean uh no but I, I mean I so I had an older brother and we I kind of I generally watched whatever he wanted to watch <laughs> so um I, I saw the the original trilogy when I was younger, and and I enjoyed the movies, but I enjoyed it the way I enjoy yeah. other movies. It wasn't anything like out of the ordinary or like uh, especially feel like I don't know, exceptionally amazing in my mind. Um, and I think this is something that I that that yeah, you asked a question last night uh, that that made me think about this. And Adisher was talking about how he uh, you know watched the movies in theaters when he was a kid, and I think that because I didn't have anybody who cared about them from their childhood or maybe, you know, for, from the previous generation that did watch them when they were kids. Um, or like, you know, my, my parents didn't know what Star Wars was. Yeah. They didn't care about it. And it's kind of, this is something that gets, uh, you know, perpetuated generation to generation. Yep. And parents are fans. And they're like, I want to ex expose my kids to this fandom. And, and hopefully they attach to it yeah. in the same way. And then that could be something that we... Uh, that you know that we align on and can do together and I didn't have that so I didn't have none of my friends really I think as far as I remember had that my brother wasn't I mean my brother was is still a bigger fan than I am I think but um, uh, because I didn't have that as a kid I didn't have those movies out in theaters I don't think I had that same connection to it because nobody else in my life really had it wasn't the in that direction type in your environment Correct. well I mean it was, it was yeah. for some people yeah. because they had I think because they had that previous generation yes, that was like exactly. influencing him in that direction and hyping them up for it yeah. and hyping the movies up for them and because I just wasn't exposed to that I, it wasn't really on my radar and, and, and that's the beauty is I should jump in with yeah exactly scene. but that's the thing like that's why I specifically love you know you guys are friends but like when you guys were down with us a couple of years ago at yeah. Kate, I love the combination of two because it's such a different experience into the Star Wars specifically franchise you are a newfound fan um, and, and, and growing with it, you know, through work, where I'm sure it's like the dream job because he's already was doing the work, but he always was a big Star Wars fan, Bible first, all that, and then starts getting too into the all the work of right. Star Wars itself. So it's like it's two totally different experiences. Right. 100%. And it's amazing to get that, you know, that's for, yeah. for like for fans and like the Q&A panel will be doing tomorrow. Summer is coming blatant and blatant uh, plugging. Uh, <laughs> oh, Summer is we'll coming tomorrow, we'll Q&A. But, you know, that's the, what's so fun about you know, like having conversations with them. And when you get the opportunity to see them at their tables, they're very welcoming, very warm and just like this just at their like table. This, yes. Yeah, they're not going to say, oh, sign up. Get it. No, they, they, they embrace you. They talk to you. You know, they, they, they enjoy the fandom because they enjoy the franchise well, as well. That, we'll, plug, we'll plug what's going to happen tonight. <laughs> yeah, but that's all I want to see artist's take. But yeah, right. that's the whole Right, so point. what's your take on that? So... Mine is in one aspect is a little bit similar to his in one small aspect and then everything else is very different. So, of course, when I was going into it, nobody knew what Star Wars was. It hadn't come out yet. And uh, so I grew up in Iran until I was seven years old. So what I grew up on was John Wayne movies, Clint Eastwood movies, F Troop, you know, Lone Ranger, that kind of stuff. So we were coming here on a family trip. I had some family here, so we came over here to you know, see my family and there's uprisings in Iran. And my dad says, why don't you guys stay here? Oh, so that was during the Ayatollah. Yeah. And the, the well, it was right before, Shah, right? So Shah. 77. So we were here in 77 and, and they said, hey, let me go back and see what's going on. And then he went back and he said, no, nope, check them into school. They're not coming back. You know, there, there's going to be a revolution. We didn't really know how it was going to play out. Okay. 
Uh, so while I was here, my cousin, uh, two older cousins, and one of them was like, hey, I'm going to take him to see a movie. So we go see this movie called Star Wars. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What is this? Now, even as a seven year old, I knew all, a lot of the myth that's in Star Wars comes from a lot of old Persian Zoroastrian stuff like Jedi, Magi. The force it's the way we pick the good path or the bad path dark we literally call it the angry mind versus the you know prosperous happy mind you know that type of stuff so immediately this very i had a deep association with this i was a giant star wars fan from 1977 on and so of course the toys there were no toys if you guys remember correctly you had to get those little coupon things or whatever it was you wait and you're like when's it gonna come <laughs> and then it would come and then you'd get it and you know, different than today. Those toys back then were pretty cheap. I know, you know, maybe inflation also, but still, it was not anymore. Cheap. Not anymore. <laughs> Especially so you'd, those. you'd go to like Thrifty or you'd go to any store, Kmart or whatever. You could get like a, a Stormtrooper for like two ninety nine or something like that. <laughs> and, you know, and my mom was like, how many of these white guys <laughs> do you need? And I'm like, but you see the movie, see how many there are. Yeah, so I had like, I had like 30 yeah, of them. Many just, yeah, 30 of them, you know? And, and so then you, you collect more and then Empire Strikes Back comes out and you're like, oh my God. And then Return of the Jedi, you're just waiting. Is he, is he the dad or not? He's tricking him. What's going on? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. So of course, the other thing was that once the movies aired, they were out of theater. They were out of theater unless there was a re-release in theater, yeah. but they were out. So Star Wars was very special. It was very untouchable to us. And uh, so once they released it on VHS, of course, you buy the VHS and then you watch it until that thing wears out. And then you hopefully have made a backup copy or you buy another one. And then when my buddy bought the laser disc, we're like, oh, my God, we're going to see it clear. You just watch that whole thing. And and then um, then there was a fan film that was made that was like cops with the stormtroopers. I can't yeah, remember that. that. That's troopers. We were like, like how is troopers made? We, it, we, I was at USC and I'm like, how like how did these guys even do something like this like where do you even get these outfits they were un, untouchable so i had made my own darth vader outfit of course i'm way too short to be darth vader i'm 5'10 <laughs> so i'd made my own darth vader outfit and we went to a nightclub in la in halloween and the guy goes are you from he goes come to the front of the line and my buddy was dressed up like some random beast you know it just looked like something we were like okay it would be Halloween's cantina so whatever bad. right so we we go in and the guy goes are you from 20th century fox i said no and he goes well you guys can stay at the front of the line it's like 200 people waiting to get in. he goes oh the guy from 20th century fox is here and i'm like what he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. So I go, he goes, you'll see him. I go in there and I get tapped from behind. There's a stormtrooper behind me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And he takes his helmet off. He goes, oh, where'd you get this? I go, I made it. I go, where'd you get this? He goes, I borrowed it. It's it's from Return of the Jedi. And I'm like, are, are oh, you like kidding a, me? A screen use. Yeah. Well, it was one of the suits. So what? And he goes, I got to get it back. And about. But, but wow. remember, at that time, nobody knew that <laughs> yeah. stuff was that valuable. Like all the Star Wars stormtrooper remaining outfits were in dumpsters. Yeah. They were in dumpsters. Yeah, People were saving them. Production wasn't thought they would yeah. never before right. Disney ever owned. Yeah, it, they know? rescued some of them out of a yeah. dumpster or some guy's attic. Now they barcode of everything. Of course, they barcode your socks, everything like all the outfits I wore is all barcoded and then stored and it's all kept in, in, in for you know for posterity. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, that's a thing because now. that's a that, yeah. that's Cons a thing. Cons and collectibles. Exactly. And retrieving that merchandise and all that you know. Exactly. Or considering considering that merchandise was not a thing as this was happening exactly. it's become a thing now right? exactly so they weren't cataloging and like you said in no, dumpsters, they, like, oh, didn't matter this, you know? so yeah so then uh so you know you watch troopers and like oh and then you know of course they announce a uh, phantom menace yeah. and of course you see darth maul and ray park and what he did with uh, that character we're like amazing what yeah. is this and it just just shot through the roof again so you start seeing that whole evolution and you know and then star wars started to get a kick and a whole new general clone wars and rebels and then of course the, the fandom, we were like, oh my God, I can't believe Filoni is going to spearhead this and, you know, Favreau and, and... Thankfully, thankfully. So let me, Filoni let me tell you something. Favreau you know, is the perfect combination to take on the Favreau is, Favreau is a genius. Whatever he touches turns to gold. Yeah. And he's probably one of the kindest men you'll meet. He really is. And he's a Star Wars fan. And he's a, and that's, that's the important part. For this. It's not a job. He's, he's a, a Star fan Wars fan. And, and same thing with Filoni. He knows the old, the, the only other people I can say that, you know, really religiously know the world that they are, are working in, like Filoni, Favreau, Doug Chang, these people know this world. It's not a job that they're coming to do it is, is James Cameron in Avatar. Yeah. He he knows why that Navi's toe is the way that it is and why that ship would be this way. 
So they understand that world. They understand the language. They understand the functionality of how this character would interact with this one differently versus this one. So that's why I, I feel like you see what you're seeing with, you know, the, the Favreau and Filoni, uh, what's going on, you know. And, and by the way, I, I love the sequels, too. I love what J.J., you know, did with Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker. I'll leave Last Jedi off the table, but, you know, still Stormtroopers, but we'll still talk about, you know, I, I, I still I still enjoy all of those. But just to tie it up for you, it, or for me, it goes back to Rogue One through Return of the Jedi is one movie. But it matters. What you're saying matters. Like, for example, with Solo, the whole Solo situation that it was handed over to different uh, uh, production minds. Right. That eventually landed Ron Howard, thankfully. Which thankfully, was a right. genius. Yeah. And then they invited, which is an error that uh, some of the other movies that you mentioned didn't do. They invited George into the set. And there he went. There's a scene when Han Solo... It's, it's like flirting with Kira yeah. in, in the closet thing of, of the Falcon. Right. So George is looking at the thing. This is known worldwide. Uh, right. He's looking at the scene and then Han Solo is like, re Kira is like trying or something and he takes the piece, put it on a hanger, hangs it over and continues the line. And then George goes like, that's not Han. Right. He would just grab it and throw it on the floor. Right. He doesn't care. So that those little details. I agree. That matters. That That's matters. why for me, like when, you know, th there's moments when you're on set, like in a, in a principal character role, you, you get access to some things that others kind of don't. And being a Star Wars fanatic, you know, he's a fan. I'm a fanatic. Okay. He became a fan. I was always a fan turned into a fanatic. They bring stuff into that room and you look and you're like, what is that? Well, I, I need to see it. I Somehow I touch it. I you could wait. close your eyes and touch anything anywhere. And you're like, I'll keep it. I don't even know what it is, but I'll keep it. <laughs> it's it's that cool, right? Well, that goes when you have somebody like Doug Chang or when you have somebody like Deborah Chow oh, or yeah. Favreau, Filoni, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. They or Kevin, who did oh. uh, the directing units for us in Jabba the Hutt. These guys, they... They care about every little detail of what you're seeing. Taika, they, they care about these tiny little details because while you're looking at you, your eye is picking up that detail. And your eye either says it doesn't belong or it does belong. And the Star Wars in our world is a real world. It's not Star Trek where it's yeah. clean and sterile. It's dirty. It's used. It's, it's worked. And, and that's kind of how I felt when I went to set. Yeah, it, it was even a joke a on set. And a it was, floor, so yeah. He cannot be clean. It, there it was even a joke on set. They're like, hey, are we ready? And I remember, you know, Jojo, I, don't know, I love him to death and indebted to him. Jojo was standing there talking to Deborah Chow. Deborah's like, are we ready for the day? And like, I don't know if we're ready, but he's ready. I don't know if they push a button and Adisha jumps out of the floor <laughs> or drops out of the scene. As I was excited, I would get the armor on, get out there, and I would watch You're everybody. A kid on set. Well, time. I was making sure the stormtroopers, yeah. you know, held their blasters right, did stuff right, and, you know, and they in turn responded. And a lot of times you'll see stunts and background are separate because they have separate jobs to do. When 501 first came on board, stunts 100% accepted him in because they were like, these guys know what they're doing. And they're they're making us look good. And, and then our stunts will make them look good. And they when they asked me, they said, hey, what's that whole thing? I said, my job here is to make sure as a stunt performer, but also as a 501 first member, that when you watch that sequence, you see 65 stunt performers and you can't tell who's stunts and who's not. And it, it, it worked out. So it, it's when you care that much and you put it in it, I believe that in the end result, you always see it. it always. It matters. It absolutely matters. It's a matters. game changer. Exactly. It's a game changer. Well, uh, and Peter Jackson, look what he did with Lord of the Rings. Yes. Same thing. Maybe not The Hobbit, not my favorite, but Lord of the Rings, flawless movies. You, When you care about every little detail of what these these movies should be, you're going to see the difference. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. I know you're in a time crunch. I'll yeah. stop kicking my leg. Oh. <laughs> so before before we go, I have a million questions, but I know that I don't have time for that. But before we go, why don't we give it a, um, an additional plug? Like, where are oh, they going to be tonight? So there we go. First one. Coolest first round. Place two on Earth. Night. Lynn's Arcade and more in Margate, Florida. It's going to be a very fun event. We're going to have both the fellas here with us uh, doing a nice meet and greet. Uh, we're also going to be joined by Elise Ballman and Ernie Reyes Jr. to see it, checking their flights now on my phone that they are on board. So we will have everyone with us tonight. Uh, the arcade will be open till 2 a.m. Uh, I know the fellas here, the the, the uh, meet and greet till 9 p.m., but they're the type of guys that if the line's kicking, they're not going to turn you down. They're going to hang out. And, uh, D, like you said, he's a gamer, so this is his playtime. 
uh, is actually the arcade where the cons probably be more artist shares. But yeah, so join the Spins Arcade and more. Events from six to nine. Arcade is open to two a.m. Play all night, fifteen dollars. This is it's happening fantastic. tonight. This is two night Friday. Uh, March 1st at Flint's Arcade More in Margate, Florida. Uh, all the information, you click the links, uh, we'll have all that information for you so you can get there. And then the big one of the weekend, uh, and there'll be one last opportunity in Miami on Sunday, but tomorrow is Sunrise Comic Con, March 2nd, at the Sunrise Civic Center. That's an all day event, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., ticketed event. Uh, you can get tickets online now or you can get them at the door. Uh, again, it's going to be a huge event, all kinds of wonderful stuff going on. We got escape rooms and panels and cosplay. And the five first to be there, so a lot of photo opportunities, and of course, our celebrity guests, like the fellas here with us now, are uh, going to be in the celebrity room. You have that opportunity to go ahead and get uh, your autograph and pictures with them, and talk to them, and shake their hand, and tell them your favorite scenes, and ask them their favorite scenes, and all that wonderful interaction, as well as their Q and A panels with us, fanatically correct uh, at Fan Correct on Linktree, as well as for the roundup for the Miami people, the Southwest Miami people. One more chance Sunday at the New Era Collectibles down in Miami. They will be there. That's a 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. event. Come on out there. You have an offer, one last opportunity before they're out of here for the Miami folks who can't make it out or just busy Friday night or busy Saturday. Uh, you have three opportunities to see these wonderful fellas. You've got to make it out to one yeah. of them. It's going to be a great time. This and is your you so close to Star Wars. This is your chance. Oh, yeah. Definitely oh, yeah. your chance. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for both of you for yes, coming thanks, here. Been, I've been geeking out the whole conversation. Uh, I have thank you, man. A million questions. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. it. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks you for, for having coming. us here. Yeah, thanks Fantastic for having us here. production. And yeah. they were so happy. I mean, just sitting down, we're surrounded by so much of oh, yeah. the yeah, uh, elements. I mean, that's it. You got, you you got Dimitri there. Yeah, I know. We got a Tuscan Raider up here. That's Dimitri. And we got the Mandra yeah, helmet You want to wear that? Is that just, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. I uh, and I think Dimitri's trooper. already traumatized by it, so he's not putting it on right now yet either. But, it's it's, uh, it's so the fun. clone. The clone. I never put on a stormtrooper helmet before. That was cool. That was a great it's, moment for me. What about the clones? Is it better? Last question before we go. <laughs> so the so here's the funny thing about the clones. The 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 way our that visor is nothing like ours. Ours is a slit. I can tell you. Hands okay, down, so well do well do hands it. down, all the well, troopers do it up. They liked wearing the clone armor more than the trooper armor, just because of the ergonomic thighs and stuff, so they oh, can really? move it around. Yeah. Uh, oh, but the, the helmet, the helmet sat on us exactly <laughs> nope. the same. Yeah, but it see, looks like the visor is better for sure. Yeah, but you see, well, but the visor, you see how broad that yeah, visor I, I is. Of, Ours is not like that. Yeah, Our, I can wear this. Like, the the yeah, actual. I, can know, I, can no, I bet you can. Yeah, yeah. if you look, if you look at the actual cut on it, it's a slit. It's 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 I'm a gonna wear this all day. it's okay. less yeah. <laughs> it's how are you gonna go to Flint? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Flint just like this. You can see him next to like well, yeah. Do you like a team up photograph or a uh, yeah exactly <laughs> Barbie or what? Well, Barbie, yeah, we should dress him as a Ken. As yeah, a exactly. Ken. There as a you go. Ken. Exactly. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Wait for, wait, guys, go to Flint's awesome. tonight. Go to Flint's tonight. You're gonna yeah, get man. picture I'm all us. pictures. Get to know them. Are you going to do yeah. panels and stuff? Uh, so. Not at Flynn's. That's going to be a Sunrise Comic Con. But yeah, they're going to be out there shaking hands, having conversations, taking photos. They got some great stuff. We printed out just for them. They have a team up uh, opportunity. So that's a, at a good combo price. We can get both of them on the same uh, print that Artisher himself yeah. uh, put together. for. So we have a nice you know, print for the fans to have. And you can get them to sign and take a picture with them. They'll have their banners and all that fun stuff. So yeah, come on out. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, but put the helmet awesome. back on. Yeah. So <laughs> Bye. Guillermo wants to hide.